Welcome back to today's American Losses. We gather once again to pay tribute to some iconic figures who died today and recently. These individuals have left an indelible mark on our hearts and the world with their contributions to the arts. As we honor their legacies, we extend our deepest condolences to their families and fans. Rest in peace. If their stories have touched your heart or if you feel moved by the extraordinary lives they lived, please show your respect and remembrance by liking this video. Thank you for being a part of our community. James Darren, born James William Ercolani on June 8, 1936 in Philadelphia, was a celebrated American actor, director, and singer. Rising to fame in the late 1950s and early 1960s, he starred in popular films like Gidget, 1959, The Gene Krupa Story, 1959, All the Young Men, 1960, The Guns of Navarone, 1961, and Diamond Head, 1962. He also made a mark as a teen pop singer, achieving a hit with Goodbye Cruel World in 1961. Darren transitioned to television with notable roles such as Dr. Anthony Newman in The Time Tunnel, 1966 to 1967, Officer James Corrigan in T.J. Hooker, 1983 to 1986, and Vic Fontaine in Star Trek, Deep Space Nine, 1998 to 1999. Growing up in South Philadelphia and of Italian descent, Darren pursued his passion for acting in New York City, studying under Stella Adler. Despite not considering himself a singer, he would often perform at his father's encouragement. In his personal life, Darren married Gloria Terlitsky in 1955, his sweetheart since 1953. They had a son, James Jr., before divorcing in 1958. His son, later known as Jim Moret, became a journalist and TV commentator. Darren married Evie Norland, Miss Denmark 1958 and 1960, and they had two sons, Christian and Anthony. On September 2, 2024, Darren passed away in his sleep at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles at the age of 88. In the weeks before his death, he faced health challenges related to his aortic valve, but his condition was too fragile for surgery. James Darren left a lasting legacy in film, television, and music, remembered for his charisma and talent. Eric Raymond Gilliland was an American television producer, writer, actor, and whistler, known for his diverse talents in the entertainment world. He was born and raised in Glenview, Illinois, where he cultivated a passion for the arts from a young age. Gilliland graduated from Glenbrook South High School in 1980. He then pursued higher education at Northwestern University's School of Communication, graduating in 1984. Gilliland's career spanned multiple facets of the entertainment industry. He made a significant impact as a television producer and writer, contributing to many popular shows. His skills as an actor and his unique talent as a whistler further showcased his versatility and creativity. Throughout his career, Gilliland earned respect and admiration for his work ethic and passion for storytelling. His ability to engage audiences with compelling narratives made him a valued figure in television. On September 1, 2024, Eric Raymond Gilliland passed away after battling cancer. His loss was felt deeply by colleagues, friends, and fans alike. His contributions to television and his multifaceted talents have left a lasting legacy. He is remembered not only for his professional achievements, but also for his warm personality and the joy he brought to those around him. Linda Deutsch was a prominent American journalist for the Associated Press, AP, known for her coverage of high-profile court cases from 1967 to 2014. She reported on the trials of Charles Manson, Sirhan Sirhan, O.J. Simpson, Michael Jackson, and many others. Born in Perth Amboy, New Jersey, Deutsch grew up in Bradley Beach. At age 12, she started a newsletter for an Elvis Presley fan club, sparking her interest in journalism. After graduating from Asbury Park High School, she earned a degree in English from Monmouth University in 1965. Encouraged by her uncle, a newspaper editor, Deutsch pursued journalism despite the gender challenges of the time. While in college, she interned at the Perth Amboy Evening News covering the 1963 Civil Rights March on Washington and Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream speech, her first front-page story. Deutsch joined the AP in 1967 as the only woman in the Los Angeles Bureau. Over her career, she became known for her thorough and impactful reporting, eventually earning the prestigious title of Special Correspondent in 1992. 
She covered major events like the assassination of Robert F. Kennedy, the trials of notorious figures, the Rodney King riots, and the Vietnam War's fallout. She retired in 2014, but returned briefly in 2019 to follow up on O.J. Simpson's life after prison. That same year, she endowed a $1 million journalism scholarship at Monmouth University. Despite her successful career, Deutsch never married or had children, attributing this to her focus on her work. In 2022, Deutsch was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. After initial treatment, the cancer returned in 2024. She passed away on September 1, 2024, at her home in Los Angeles, surrounded by friends and family. Linda Deutsch's career is remembered for her trailblazing work and commitment to journalism. Isaac Freeman III, better known as Fatman Scoop, was an American rapper, hype man, and radio personality. Born on August 6, 1971, in Harlem, New York, he became famous for his energetic and powerful voice. Scoop got his stage name from a childhood nickname given by his uncle because of his love for ice cream. Scoop first gained attention with his 1999 hit, Be Faithful, featuring Crooklyn Clan. The song became a massive success, topping the UK singles chart in 2003 and gaining popularity worldwide. He was also known for his work on Missy Elliott's Lose Control and Mariah Carey's It's Like That, both released in 2005. Throughout his career, Fatman Scoop collaborated with many major artists, including Timbaland, Lil Jon, Janet Jackson, David Guetta, and Skrillex. He was a versatile performer, working as a rapper, hype man, and radio host. He also appeared on television shows like the UK series Chancers and the animated series The Boondocks. Scoop and his then-wife Shanda Freeman hosted the MTV show Man and Wife, where they discussed various aspects of life and relationships. In 2015, Scoop participated in Celebrity Big Brother 16, UK vs. USA, finishing in 11th place. During the COVID-19 pandemic, he started other businesses, including trucking and an ice cream company. After live performances were put on hold, Scoop continued to make music, releasing a remix of Sierra's Level Up with Missy Elliott in 2018. In July 2024, he collaborated with Tech N9 on No Popcorn, and on August 30th, 2024, he released two new singles, Let It Go and Our House. Tragically, on the same day, he collapsed during a performance in Hamden, Connecticut. Despite efforts to save him, Fatman Scoop passed away at the age of 53. His booming voice and dynamic energy made a lasting impact on hip-hop and pop culture. John Michael Gaudreau, known as Johnny Hockey, was an American professional ice hockey player who played 11 seasons in the NHL. Born on August 13, 1993 in Salem, New Jersey, Gaudreau began his career with Boston College from 2011 to 2014, where he won the Hobie Baker Award as the best NCAA player in 2014. He was drafted by the Calgary Flames in the 2011 NHL entry draft and quickly made a name for himself in the league. In his first full NHL season, Gaudreau was named to the NHL All-Rookie Team and played in the 2015 NHL All-Star Game. He was also a finalist for the Calder Memorial Trophy as the league's best rookie. Gaudreau was awarded the Lady Bing Memorial Trophy in the 2016-17 season, recognizing his sportsmanship and skill. In 2022, he signed with the Columbus Blue Jackets and played there for two seasons. On August 29, 2024, Gaudreau and his brother Matthew were tragically killed by an alleged drunk driver while cycling in Oldman's Township, New Jersey. The driver, who admitted to consuming alcohol before and during driving, was arrested at the scene and charged with death by auto. The accident happened just before they were to attend their sister Katie's wedding, scheduled for the next day. Gaudreau's death was met with widespread mourning. All 32 NHL teams and numerous sports figures and organizations paid tribute to his life and career. Memorials appeared outside the Blue Jackets nationwide arena, the Flames Scotiabank Saddle Dome, and at the crash site. Moments of silence were observed at several sports events, including those of the Ohio State Buckeyes and the Columbus Crew. Gaudreau is survived by his wife Meredith and their two children. His passing left a significant void in the hockey community and beyond with many remembering him for his exceptional talent on the ice and his gentlemanly conduct. Steve Silberman was a prominent American writer and journalist, 
Known for his work with Wired magazine, where he served as an editor and contributor for over two decades, Silberman gained significant recognition for his 2010 Wired article, The Placebo Problem, which examined the influence of placebos in the pharmaceutical industry. His 2015 book, Neurotribes explored autism rights and neurodiversity, earning the Samuel Johnson Prize. Silberman's article, The Geek Syndrome from Wired, which highlighted autism within Silicon Valley, has been influential in the autism community. His Twitter account was also recognized by Time Magazine in 2011 as one of the best Twitter feeds. In 2016, he gave a keynote address at the United Nations on World Autism Awareness Day. Born in a Jewish family on December 23, 1957, Silberman was influenced by his Passover Haggadah and his communist parents. He studied psychology at Oberlin College and earned a master's degree in English literature from Berkeley. Silberman was deeply involved in the Grateful Dead scene, attending his first concert in 1973 and moving to San Francisco in 1979 to live freely and be near the Zen Center. He also studied with Allen Ginsberg at Naropa University in 1977, where he later became Ginsberg's teaching assistant. Silberman had a close friendship with musician David Crosby and co-hosted a podcast with him. His writings often included themes from the Beat Generation, with poet Philip Whalen as a hero. Silberman was married to his husband Keith, a high school science teacher, since 2003. In 2019, he began working on a new book titled The Taste of Salt, which aimed to tell the story of the medical advancements in treating cystic fibrosis. Silberman passed away on August 28, 2024, at the age of 66. His contributions to journalism and his advocacy for autism awareness left a lasting impact. Michael Lerner was a notable American political activist, editor of Ticken Magazine, and rabbi of Beit Ticken Synagogue in Berkeley, California. Born and raised in the Weequahic section of Newark, New Jersey, Lerner attended Farbrook Country Day School before switching to a public school in his neighborhood, which had a significant Jewish population. Lerner graduated from Weequahic High School in 1960 and went on to earn a BA from Columbia University. He then pursued advanced degrees at the University of California, Berkeley, earning a Ph.D. in philosophy in 1972 and another Ph.D. in clinical social psychology from the Wright Institute in 1977. He was known for his work with Tikkun, a progressive Jewish magazine that emphasizes interfaith dialogue and social justice. Lerner's personal life included three marriages to Nan Fink until 1991, Deborah Cohn, married in 1998, divorced in 2014, and Kat Zavis, married in 2015, with divorce proceedings initiated in 2024. He had one son and two grandchildren. In February 2009, Lerner publicly disclosed his diagnosis of lung cancer and underwent successful surgery later that year. He passed away on August 28, 2024, in California, at the age of 81. Lerner's contributions to political activism and interfaith dialogue left a lasting impact. Sidney Raymond Udy was a prominent American professional wrestler known for his roles in World Wrestling Federation, WWF, and World Championship Wrestling, WCW, under the ring names Sid Justice, Sid Vicious, and Psycho Sid. Udy achieved notable success in his career, holding six world championships, two WWF championships, two WCW World Heavyweight Championships, and two USWA Unified World Heavyweight Championships. He also won the WCW United States Heavyweight Championship once and headlined major events, including WrestleMania 8 and 13 and Starcade 2000. Udy began his wrestling career in Continental Championship Wrestling, CCW, in 1987 as Lord Humongous. His early success included winning the NWA Southeastern Heavyweight Championship and later forming a popular tag team with Shane Douglas. He also competed in New Japan Pro Wrestling, NJPW. As Vicious Warrior, and briefly appeared in World Class Championship Wrestling, WCCW, where he adopted the ring name Sid Vicious. Married to Sabrina Page, nay Estes, since December 30, 1983, Udy had two sons, Frank, known from CBS's Big Brother, and Gunner, also a wrestler. Udy resided in Marion, Arkansas, with his wife at the time of his death. A fan of softball, Udy played the sport during breaks from wrestling.
In January 2011, he faced legal troubles, including charges for not wearing a seatbelt and possession of marijuana. Yudi passed away from non-Hodgkin's lymphoma on August 26, 2024, at the age of 63. On the same night, WWE Raw aired a tribute video where Damian Priest honored Yudi by performing his signature moves in tribute. Russell Lamar Malone was an influential American jazz guitarist, known for his work with notable musicians such as Jimmy Smith, Harry Connick Jr., and Diana Krall. Born in Albany, Georgia, Malone began playing guitar at age four with a toy guitar gifted by his mother. Inspired by B.B. King and the Dixie Hummingbirds, he was profoundly influenced by a televised performance of George Benson with Benny Goodman when he was 12. Mostly self-taught, Malone's career took off in 1988 with Jimmy Smith, followed by a notable tenure with Harry Connick Jr. and then Diana Krall, contributing to three Grammy-nominated albums. Malone's work extended to recording and touring with Benny Green, resulting in albums like Kaleidoscope and Bluebird. He collaborated with prominent artists such as Ron Carter, Roy Hargrove, and Diane Reeves, and contributed to recordings with Kenny Barron, Branford Marsalis, and others. Malone also recorded solo projects, including his first album in 1992 and Triple Play in 2010. He performed live at venues such as Jazz Standard and celebrated Sonny Rollins' 80th birthday in New York City. Tragically, Malone died of a heart attack in Tokyo on August 23, 2024, while on tour with a trio, including Ron Carter and Donald Vega. He was 60 years old. Alvin Austin Adels Jr. was a distinguished American basketball player, coach, and executive, best known for his long tenure with the Golden State Warriors. Nicknamed the Destroyer, Adels played point guard and was a pivotal figure in the Warriors' history. Selected by the Warriors in the 1960 NBA draft, he played 11 seasons with the team, including their move from Philadelphia to San Francisco in 1962. He transitioned to player coach in the 1970-71 season, leading the team to an NBA championship in 1975. After retiring as a player, he continued as head coach until 1983 and later served as the team's general manager until 1986. Adel's number 16 was retired by the Warriors in 1977, and he was inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in 2019. Born in Newark, New Jersey, Adels graduated from Wequiak High School and earned a bachelor's degree from North Carolina A&T State University. Initially intending to return to Newark to coach, he accepted the Warriors' offer and made a significant impact on the team. Adels married Wilhelmina Rice in 1964 with Wilt Chamberlain as his best man. The couple had two children, Alvin III and Erica, and several grandchildren, including Isaiah Adels, a college basketball player. He also earned a master's degree in curriculum and instruction from the University of San Francisco in 1983. Adels, a Catholic, passed away on August 20, 2024, at his home in Oakland, California, at the age of 87. Philip John Donahue was a pioneering American media personality, writer, and producer, best known as the creator and host of The Phil Donahue Show. This groundbreaking talk show, later known simply as Donahue, was renowned for its audience participation format and aired for 29 years, starting in Dayton, Ohio in 1967 and concluding in New York City in 1996. Donahue's show frequently addressed contentious issues like abortion, consumer protection, civil rights, and war, often featuring debates between liberals and conservatives. He was a major figure in daytime television, influencing other talk show hosts, including Oprah Winfrey, who credited Donahue with paving the way for her own show. In 1996, Donahue was ranked number 42 on TV Guide's list of the 50 greatest TV stars of all time. He also briefly hosted a talk show on MSNBC from July 2002 to February 2003. Born in Cleveland, Ohio, on December 21, 1935, Donahue came from a working-class Irish Catholic family. He graduated from the University of Notre Dame in 1957 with a degree in business administration. His first marriage to Margaret Cooney produced five children but ended in divorce in 1975. He married actress Marlo Thomas in 1980, but they did not have children together. Donahue's personal life included a brief employment of photographer Vivian Meyer as a nanny and a deep connection to his Catholic faith. 
though he expressed critical views on certain church teachings. He passed away on August 18, 2024, at the age of 88, at his Manhattan home after a long illness, surrounded by family and his beloved golden retriever, Charlie. Luther Kent was a celebrated American blues singer renowned for his powerful, soulful voice and his contributions to New Orleans music. Born Kent Rowell in New Orleans, Louisiana, Kent's early exposure to music included influences from Bobby Bland, Etta James, and Ray Charles. His professional career began at the age of 14, with his first record released by Montel Records. Kent's musical journey saw him as the lead singer for the band Cold Grits in 1970, though their debut was not released. He briefly joined Blood, Sweat, and Tears in 1974, but left before recording due to contractual obligations. In 1977, Kent released his debut solo album, World Class, which was produced by Cy Frost and recorded in London and Colorado. In 1978, Kent formed Luther Kent and Trick Bag, a band known for its blend of swinging blues and New Orleans R&B. The group was active through the 1980s and 1990s, releasing several albums. Kent also explored gospel music with a 1996 album, featuring collaborations with John Lee and the Heralds of Christ, Alan Toussaint, and Pete Fountain. Kent continued to perform and record throughout his career, including a 2006 tour in Italy with guitarist Roby Zonka. He also collaborated with the Dukes of Dixieland, adding his vocals to their traditional jazz recordings. Luther Kent passed away on August 16, 2024, at the age of 76, leaving behind a legacy of rich, soulful blues music. Ralph Pierre Lecoq, known professionally as Peter Marshall, was a prominent American game show host, television and radio personality, singer, and actor. He gained fame as the original host of The Hollywood Squares, a role he held from 1966 to 1981. Marshall's career spanned nearly five decades, with credits in television, film, and Broadway. Born in Clarksburg, West Virginia, Marshall was the son of Ralph and Jean Lecoq, a show business family. Following his father's tragic suicide when he was 10, he moved with his mother to New York City. After graduating from high school, he was drafted into the U.S. Army during World War II. Stationed in Italy, he began his career as a disc jockey at a radio station in Naples before being discharged in 1946 with the rank of Staff Sergeant. Marshall adopted his stage name with the help of John Robert Powers, who had originally chosen the last name for Peter's sister, Joanne Drew a well-known actress of the time. Marshall married Lori Stewart in 1989, and he had four children and two stepchildren from previous marriages. His son, Pete Marshall, was a former Major League Baseball player. Marshall faced significant health challenges, including a severe battle with COVID-19 in early 2021, which left him in hospice care. Despite his illness, he managed to recover at home with extensive medical support. Tragically, his 68-year-old son, David Lecoq, passed away from COVID-19 in August 2021. Peter Marshall passed away from kidney failure on August 15, 2024, at the age of 98, at his home in Encino, Los Angeles, California. His legacy includes a distinguished career in television and entertainment that continues to be remembered by fans and colleagues alike. Justin Seth Riley, better known by his stage names Beat King and Club Godzilla, was a prominent American rapper, songwriter, and record producer from Houston, Texas. Rising to fame in the 2010s, Riley was celebrated for his distinct style and impactful tracks in the rap scene. His 2010 viral single, Crush, marked his entry into the music world, quickly gaining popularity and setting the stage for his subsequent success. Riley's breakout single, Thick, achieved platinum status, solidifying his reputation in the industry. Another notable track, Then Leave, further showcased his musical prowess. Throughout his career, Riley collaborated with a roster of well-known artists, including Bun B, Paul Wall, Chamillionaire, Lil Kiki, DJ Chose, and Doro, among others. These collaborations highlighted his versatility and influence in the Houston rap scene. Making his debut in 2014, Riley's music resonated with fans and critics alike, contributing significantly to the genre. Despite his rising success, Riley's life was tragically cut short. He passed away on August 15, 2024, due to a pulmonary embolism. His death marked a significant loss to the music community, 
where his legacy and contributions will be remembered and cherished. Emma Hemming Willis recently provided an update on her husband, Bruce Willis, who is living with frontotemporal dementia, FTD. Appearing on the Monday morning episode of Today, Hemming Willis spoke with anchor Hoda Kotb about the impact of the diagnosis on their lives, particularly during World Frontotemporal Dementia Awareness Week. During the interview, Hemming Willis shared the challenging reality of dealing with dementia. What I'm learning is that dementia is hard, she said. It's hard on the person diagnosed. It's also hard on the family. And that is no different for Bruce or myself or our girls. When they say that this is a family disease, it really is. When Cop asked if Willis is aware of his condition, Hemming Willis responded, hard to know, it's hard to know. FTD affects the frontal lobe of the brain, which impacts speech, motor skills, and personality changes. This area also controls self-insight, making it difficult for Willis to fully understand his condition. Despite the challenges, Hemming Willis, who describes herself as her husband's care partner, emphasized that joy still exists within their family. There's so many beautiful things happening in our lives, she said. It's just really important for me to look up from the grief and the sadness so that I can see what is happening around us. Bruce would really want us to be in the joy of what is. The Willis family announced Bruce's retirement from acting last year due to his diagnosis. Their statement read, to Bruce's amazing supporters, as a family, we wanted to share that our beloved Bruce has been experiencing some health issues and has recently been diagnosed with aphasia, which is impacting his cognitive abilities. As a result of this, and with much consideration, Bruce is stepping away from the career that has meant so much to him. You can watch the full interview below.